Good day, collectors and viewers. Social Distance Warrior is back, and today we're going to look at another famous character from the original trilogy. This time, Home One's Admiral, Admiral Akbar. So, Admiral Akbar made his debut back in Return of the Jedi in the release in 1983. Of course, leading up to Return of the Jedi, there was a lot of speculation on what was going to happen in the movie, who the protagonist was going to be. Uh, who the antagonist was going to be uh, at the end of Empire Strikes Back. Of course, we heard that Yoda and Obi-Wan talking about that there was another and who was that other person going to be that was force sensitive. So a lot of stuff went into this movie. And of course, one thing that was always amazing about George Lucas's original trilogy is how much change happened between the three movies, how he always used a new, uh, a new setting. You know, he went from sand, he went to snow, and then he went from snow and he went to a forest and he went back to sand in Tatooine, of course, in Return of the Jedi. And uh, a lot happened and every single movie introduced us to new characters and new species of aliens and Admiral Akbar was one of them. So, of course, he was in the movie, he had a very integral part in that second half, you know, leading the rebel forces on that attack of the second Death Star. But in action figure form... Uh, Although he would come out in 1983 on the Return of the Jedi 65 back, he did make his debut a little bit earlier in 1982 as a mail-away first character for Return of the Jedi. So I remember it fondly being a sticker on the toys and stores, and I was fascinated. Look at this alien creature. He looks like, a, like an octopus or like a squid. And I was fascinated to see what the story was behind him. And of course, he was dressed in a suit, so right away you knew he was intelligent and you didn't know whether he was a good guy or whether he was a bad guy, but maybe we kind of knew he was a good guy because he was wearing white and he wasn't wearing a dark outfit, so unless he was Admiral Ulleran from Episode 4. So he made his debut as a mail away figure, and then, of course, in 1983, on the Return of the Jedi 65 back, Admiral Akbar would get his famous debut, and we have him in action figure form over here. So that's Admiral Akbar. You can see the distinct look that he has for sculpting back in the time. He actually turned out amazing. He definitely is reminiscent of what he looks like in the movie. Let's bring him up close there so you can look at his head. He's got his yellow eyeballs with a you know, black pupil in the center there. And instantly he stands out as an alien. You know he's a Star Wars character. And he was obviously adored and a welcome addition to any kid's collection that grew up at the time. So standard articulation on this guy over here. His head does move side to side. So you can turn him side to side there. Uh, arms go up and down, okay? And of course, nothing at the waist here, but his legs do go up, and you can see underneath there, he does have his foot peg, classic Kenner stuff there. This one's nice and solid. It's not the original one that I played with. I never actually had him as a kid. I got him when I became an adult. So that's Admiral Akbar. He does come with a, I would guess, a stick or some sort of weapon or, or um, conducting instrument, maybe like Star Wars version of a laser pointer from back in Return of the Jedi, but that's what he comes with. That's his accessory. And then looking up the at the figure closely, let's bring him up nice and close so we can see him. That's Admiral Akbar, and of course he was a mail away and then afterwards released on his own card. So he had quite the distribution when that movie first came out, and he definitely had a distinct look. And for me, he's always synonymous with Return of the Jedi. The first thing I remember when I think about the title for the movie is Admiral Akbar. So that's what he looks like from the front, from the bottom, and then there he is from the side with a little little yellow stripe down his pants there, reminiscent to Han Solo, and then that's what he looks like from the back. And if we bring him up close over here, we can see that it says Hong Kong and the Lucasfilm Limited 1982 there on the back of his legs. And he was a welcome new addition to our action figure shelf as kids and as adults. So let's put him back on the shelf. So we'd have to wait a number of years for another version, another character um, sculpt of Admiral Akbar, 14 years to be exact. So we'd jump ahead from 83 all the way to 97, Star Wars Gore's Dormant, Star Wars makes a comeback, Power of the Force 2 comes out, and then on the Power of the Force 2 green card box, we'd get Admiral Akbar in a brand new sculpt. And that's this guy over here, I have him on card, just to show you. So you can see on card box, a lot of the figures came with foil. Uh, photos of them and that, that was a nice big you know gimmick in the 90s was having not just uh, fake uh, toys or characters but anything with foil on it whether it was comic books 
action figures or um, cards as well, right? So there's Admiral Akbar. You can see him on card there. Uh, this is the international or Canadian release that's got the multilingual packaging. Uh, he's got a different accessory this time. It's some sort of an arm cannon. We'll look at that in a sec. But that is Admiral Akbar. It's a brand new sculpt. You can see they've come a long way in the design of the character. So there he is on front. Let's just flip that card around to the back. And then, of course, all these characters had bios on the back, and he was no exception. Admiral Akbar, 1.88 meters tall. He's the Admiral of the Rebel Alliance fleet. The Mon Calamari is his species. Affiliation is a Rebel Alliance, and of course, the Mon Calamari MC-80 Star Cruiser, as we know it as Home One, is his ship of choice, the one that he runs. There's some other figures that were part of the set as well, and you can see a nice little checklist here and a couple vehicles in there as well that came out at the time. So that's Admiral Akbar as Power of the Force 2. We do have him loose as well, so we can look at him, do a nice little review on him. That's this one over here. So... One thing we noticed right away is the sculpting has come a long way between the original ones and this one. The original one just had a simple tan color on his uh, on his head and on his uh, arms. And this one's a lot more movie accurate. It's got weathering. It's got, you know, those little patterns or spots on his head as well. So we can take a look at him there. And uh, the, you can see his nice thick eye pupils and lots of wrinkles and um, weathering around the shape of his head and around his mouth, etc. So articulation wise, you can move him side to side slightly. You know, the collar on his outfit here does get in the way, so you can only move him so much. Uh, on his arm here, you can see he does have an arm cannon. Let's just have a look at that quickly. A new accessories, of course, they Kenner and Slash Hasbro would play around with stuff, give figures their own little unique accessories. We never actually saw him use any sort of a cannon in the movie, but nonetheless, this gave you some more play feature because as you'll see in the design, he's not really designed to hold anything in hand, so that's why this thing attaches to his wrist. So uh, they call it a Comlink wrist blaster. So that's what he's got as an accessory. So looking at the character, let's bring him back up over here. We'll notice uh, he's got his insignia over here on his chest that was common with the Power of the Force 2 figures at the time. You can turn him side to side, so he's got waist articulation. Uh, his arms do move up and down, and you can see that the paint job and the weathering is on the inside of his hand and his wrist there as well, which is nice. Uh, down here at his legs, of course, the legs do move up and down. You'll notice the foot pegs there on the bottom as well. And he is in more of an action pose like a lot of the figures were at the time with the Power of the Force 2. Uh, he is a little bulky, but not as much as that original release was. They toned it down by the time we got to these guys, thankfully, and he got a much better uh, release and he... Stands the test of time a lot better than some of those original Power of the Force 2 figures do. So as far as the character himself, that's what he looks like from the front. Okay, take a nice close-up of him. And then underneath, you can see his foot pegs there. And it says Kenner China, Lucasfilm Limited, 1997 on that leg there. Uh, from the side, you can see he's got the nice yellow stripe. And now the yellow stripe goes all the way up under his arm as well, just like the original figure did. Turn around to the back, you can see the nice tan color outfit on his vest. And that's our complete Admiral Akbar from the Power of the Force 2 collection. So that's what we'd get as his new release in the 90s. And let's put him back over here. So we wouldn't see another Admiral Akbar figure until Hasbro released the Vintage Collection. So in 2010, to the fans rejoice, Hasbro announced they're going to release figures with premium sculpts and put them on vintage cards, vintage style card back. And Admiral Akbar, of course, was one of those characters. Now, an interesting little side note here with Admiral Akbar, when he was first announced back in the 80s, they were still playing around with the name of the third Star Wars movie. So it was almost going to be called Revenge of the Jedi. And of course, George Lucas changed that last minute, but there was some stuff that was released because he decided that Jedis don't take revenge. And, of course, we'd get that Revenge title afterwards in Revenge of the Sith. But at the time, some stuff was produced. And then to pay homage to that, Hasbro Kenner took initiative here and released some of the Vintage Collection figures with the Revenge of the Jedi logo. And that's the one that I have on card back here. So he did come out on both styles of card back, Return of the Jedi and Revenge. And you can see this one's Revenge. It's a nice uh, little addition to have with your collection because it's got that title change and Unless you're a diehard Star Wars fan, you probably won't notice it until you look at it closely. 
But there it is, as Revenge of the Jedi, and there's Admiral Akbar on that nice, awesome card back, reminiscent to the original one that was released. And there in the photo, you can see him sitting in his chair on home one. And then the figure does come with a couple of accessories. He does have his um, that laser pointer stick that's a little more realistic this time than that black one that came in the vintage uh, figure back in the 80s. And then he does have this one piece of the uh, home one chair that he had in that photo over here. You can kind of see it in the description there. So we'll look at that in a little more detail in a sec. So that's him on the card back with the nice Kenner logo there. And then flip it around to the back. We'll see that he is VC number 22. And again, this is the international release, the one that I picked up in Canada. There's a picture of him on the original card that was released back in the 80s. And then there's a few of the figures that he was released with at the time. Darth Vader, the B-Wing pilot. There's Jedi Knight Luke, TIE pilot, and Wicket. And you can see that I picked mine up at a store called HomeSense. And you can see how inexpensive the figure was at the time that I picked them up. But I definitely wanted to have him on that Revenge of the Jedi card back that he was released with. So that's Admiral Akbar on the Vintage Collection card. Let's have a look at him loose as well. And that's this figure over here. So... We get a definitive version of our good old Admiral Akbar over here. He does come with a couple of accessories. We'll look at those in a second. Let's take a look at the head sculpt on this guy first. So if we take a nice close-up gander of Admiral Akbar here, we'll see that he's even more realistic than that Power of the Force 2 version was. Uh, more weathering, more sculpting on the character. Uh, more detail. The back part of his dome here is a large, just like it was in the movie. So they definitely got the sculpt on there perfectly. Uh, his head is on a ball, so you can have him looking down. You can have him looking up. You can see this was cutting-edge stuff back in 2010, and we got it with Admiral Akbar over here. Now, let's look at the accessories before we look at the rest of the figure in detail here. So he does come with this, uh, I guess, potentially what could be a laser pointer. I doubt that's supposed to be a lightsaber hilt, unless somebody made a story afterwards saying that the good old Admiral was actually a Jedi in hiding, but I doubt that very much. So that is his laser pointer from Return of the Jedi. And then his other accessory was this uh, piece of his chair from Home One. Uh, you can see it's almost like a computer, some kind of a data computer. You can tell that it's supposed to plug into something. Uh, I believe there were some photos released afterwards of a prototype chair that they were considering making. If we're lucky, maybe we'll get a deluxe set someday. So we can complete that scene uh, where he sits in that chair and then we can plug this component in. That would be really neat. But that's what he came with. And it's a nice little added accessory that was probably um, supposed to come with him and should come with him. And it gives him a little bit more play value as well. So let's look at the character himself. So here's Admiral Akbar in all his glory here as a vintage collection figure. Uh, we already looked at the head. We can see that the head was on a ball. Over here, we notice at the shoulders that he does have a ball on the shoulder there too. He can lift his shoulders all the way up. He has articulation moving all the way around, much more than you probably need with this character. But if we're going to do definitive versions of these characters, we should have them. And then, of course, at the elbow here, you can bend them in. And then, of course, you can turn him, not at the wrist over here, but basically where the, the flesh tone of his skin meets his shoulder, there is an extra... Some extra articulation there, swivel side to side on the character. As far as the waist here, we can turn him side to side. There isn't any play really up or down, but side to side we do have that. And then, of course, on the legs here, you can bend his legs up. His skirt, which, you know, would have been nice if this bottom piece, at least here, was fabric. To have him sit is not, but it's a softer plastic, so you can lift his legs up. He does have uh, articulation there at the knee where you can bend his knee fully. And then if we look down at his feet here... There's nothing really you can do there because that pant leg covers the rest. That doesn't go anywhere. And that's the same articulation on both sides. He doesn't have a... He just swivel there at the at the thighs. He doesn't have a ball there. But probably movement-wise for this character, you don't need to have that much more. It's definitely a definitive version. Uh, we see his nice little insignia there on his his badge there on his chest. Uh, we lift him up underneath. We'll notice he does, does have foot pegs and they took the time to paint the bottom of his soles on his shoes, which is nice. Uh, we turn him to the side. We'll notice that he does have that paint job. And it's a little more of a tan yellow color to match what the photo is in the movie to try and make him a little more realistic. Okay, and then if we turn around from the back, we'll notice what he looks like from the back here as well with his vest 
gray tunic slash vest, and you can see his belt coming around there, and then, of course, his pants uh, sitting down there as well. So that's our Admiral Akbar definitive version from the Vintage Collection. So we'll put so that same Admiral Akbar figure would get a re-release after Disney took over Star Wars, and just before the Force Awakens came out, they released some new figures, and uh, the premium version of Star Wars figures became Black Series 375 figures, and Admiral Akbar was released in a smaller red black version of that box that the big figures came on and it's basically exactly the same figure as the one that came with on the vintage collection card um a slight new, slightly new paint job he's got a little more weathering on his head it's a little darker color but it's basically the exact same figure with exactly the same accessories uh, the nice thing about this release at the time i didn't have a um, open release of admiral akbar so when i picked this up uh, they went on clearance pretty quickly at Walmart, and I picked it up for, I think, only a couple of dollars. And I picked up a few of them just to have for customizing and to use in the background as other Mon Calamari aliens. But that's what he came out um, in 2015 on that Black Series 3.75 red slash black, you know, card box. And then on the back, there's not really much there, just a little quick description on Admiral Akbar. And you can see the Disney logo now prominently displayed on the toys. So those were all the 3.75 Admiral Ackbar figures. He would get a re-release in uh, 2021. And he's basically the same figure. They, what they did is added photo reel on some of the figures that they were re-releasing. And Admiral Ackbar is exactly the same figure with just maybe a slightly uh, different paint job on the tone of his color. But exactly the same sculpt. So no sense in revisiting that right now. We're going to do one more review of Admiral Ackbar. This time we'll do the black series release so he did get a black series release in 2020 to go along with all of his friends and partners in the black series so he has a release in six inch form and that's this guy over here so admiral akbar it's a new sculpt it's not just an upgraded sculpt of that 3.75 inch version uh, i do kind of like the 3.75 inch version a little bit better because i find that this vest sits up a little high and kind of hides his head he looks more like a turtle in there than he does um a squid or an octopus, Mon Calamari. If I bring up that 3.75 inch version, you'll see what I'm talking about. See how the head sticks out a little bit further from his costume and here it's a little bit further in. So uh, a small little gripe, but I definitely like the figure and I know it was maybe uh, a trade-off because they wanted to give him some extra articulation. In this case, you can open and close his mouth. So you can, you know, do a little bit of talking with your Admiral Akbar. You know, a little bit, it's tight there, but you close and open that, you know, it's a trap. That's not working too good. Nonetheless, a little bit of articulation to turn them side to side. Um, there's a soft tunic slash vest sitting on top here with his badge. Okay. Um, articulation on the shoulders here. He does have a swivel there. You can do full movement all the way around at the top there. Uh, as far as the elbows, you can move them there. Bend them side to side, swivel there as well. And of course, the same thing at the wrist here. You have added articulation there at the wrist, as well as bending them forward and back, which is a nice little feature as well with this character. He does have, come with a little bit more of a familiar accessory with that blaster, Rebel Blaster Rifle. That's in his hand there. That's what he's got there. Um, the jacket does come over and it's fixed on there. You can't really move it off unless you cut it. But you can move that character side to side. It does have a little bit of a swivel in there. You can see uh, separation. If I lift his arm up there, you can see inside that the, you can twist him at the waist and move him back and forth, up and down a little bit. Okay, as far as the legs down here, this is not fabric good. So it kind of gets in the way of trying to sit him. But you can maneuver it if you're creative. Uh, balls there, of course, at the at the thigh. And you can turn his leg at the thigh there as well. You can bend his knees. Okay, and of course, one awesome feature that this figure probably doesn't need but has, because a lot of the figures do, rocker ankles. So you have the rocker ankles with Admiral Akbar as well, which is a nice little feature if you want to put them in an action pose in your Return of the Jedi diorama. So that's what Admiral Akbar looks like from the front in the Black Series. Okay, that's what he looks like underneath. They painted the shoes underneath there as well, and you can see that he's got foot pegs. And that's what he looks like from the side. And then, of course, we're looking at him from the side. We'll notice that he does have that stripe going up his legs up under his shirt in there as well full suit okay and then from the back that's what he looks like and a little more detail on this guy on the back 
Uh, it's not a removable belt, but you can kind of see that the belt comes across the back and they've kind of designed it in a way where it looks like it clipped together there. And that's the back of his head there as well. So that's our Admiral Akbar from the Black Series. So that's it for Admiral Akbar as his Return of the Jedi version. I hope that you've enjoyed this review. And please like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.